from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the beloved of God. He is Habibullah. And we read in our traditions that there was a group of Sahaba and they were discussing Al-Anbiya, the Prophets. And they were talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he came out to them and he heard their conversation. And he said, you are right. Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam is Khalilullah. He is the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Musa alayhi salam is Kalimullah. He is the one who, uh, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to. And Isa alayhi salam is Ruh Allah, a spirit owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, but ana Habibullah. Wa ana Sayyidu walali Adam. Wa la fakhr. He said, I am the beloved of God. And I am the master of the children of Adam. And I'm not boasting. The Prophet sallallahu he's being commanded to tell this reality to the Sahaba. It's not a boast. He's not bragging. This is just reality. That he is the master of humanity. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He's the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sahaba loved him with a love that is beyond comprehension. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this love. In the Quran, The Prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves. The believers prefer the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, over their own lives. And when the Prophet وسلم, passed into the mercy of his Lord, there were Sahaba who never recovered from this. They never recovered until the end of their life. Right? They say Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, she died from a broken heart. They say Qutilat, be safe as shok. That she, she was slain with the sword of, of, uh, of longing, wa muhabba, wal muhabba, in love for her father. This is the type of love. Right? They say that Sayyidina Bilal, this is mentioned in our history books, our ulama have quoted it. Sayyidina Bilal ibn Rabah al Habashi, radiallahu anhu. This was a man who was being tortured in Mecca. And the message of the Prophet ﷺ raised him up, literally, on the Kaaba to make adhan. How much love do you think Bilal had for the Prophet ﷺ? How much love? He saved him in every single way, bi'idhnillah. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away into the mercy of his Lord, Sayyidina Bilal could not even remain in Medina. Because everything reminded him of the Prophet ﷺ. And he had this very strong separation anxiety. So he went to Damascus. And he was there for a couple, a year, less than a year, something like that. And then he saw a ru'ya. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ says, Man ra'ani fil manam, faqad ra'ani. And this hadith is mutawatir. Whoever sees me in a dream has truly seen me. Right? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, what is, this, what is this distance, O Bilal? Mahad al-Jafa, ya Bilal. What is this aversion? What is this distance? So Sayyidina Bilal, he immediately comes into Medina. Okay? He comes into Medina and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq greets him. He says, Bilal, please give us and Adhan, right? Like the Adhan you used to make in the days of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Bilal says, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Right? And then Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu says, Ya Bilal, just give us one Adhan so we can remember the days of the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, I can't do it. And then al Hasanain, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, alayhum as salam, who looked like the Prophet ﷺ. The ulama say, from the neck down, Sayyidina Hussein looks like the Prophet ﷺ. And from the neck up, Sayyidina Hassan looks like the Prophet ﷺ. And they said, Ya Bilal, give us an adhan so we can remember our grandfather. Well, can't say no. I ain't gonna say no. Says, I'll try. 
So Bilal begins his adhan, it's going okay. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammadan. And he collapses. Just saying the name of his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his knees give out. This is the love we're talking about. This beautiful love that we have for the Prophet sallallahu And the brother was right, Dr. Mazin is right. There's nothing like this deen. This is truly a universal religion, right? This is truly universal religion. I mean, you look at Hinduism, it's very much tied to India, you know? You look at Buddhism, there aren't a lot of Buddhists outside the Buddhist world. We know about Judaism. Um, Christianity, yani, it's evolving and changing to, to accompany people. I'll leave it at that. But this deen is truly universal. There's nothing like the Hajj. And this is why they don't, they don't show the Hajj on TV a lot, if you notice. When's the last time you saw footage of the live from the Hajj in, in Mecca? Because it is a powerful image. It is a powerful image, right? People are content with thinking that this religion is for Arabs or for a few people in the Middle East. This is a universal religion. And it began with Iqra in a cave, a single man. Iqra. Think about that. This is a miracle. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we embody the ayat, the ayah, an nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min fusihim. May we live up to this ayah. May we live up to the hadith. La yu'minu ahatukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in au kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. None of you truly believe until I am more beloved than his parents, his children, and the whole of humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to, to uh, realize this type of love.